Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Monique LaRue who is the Chairwoman, the President and CEO of Canadian Financial Services Cooperative Desjardins Group and also President of the International Cooperative Alliance. Um, Monique, welcome to interest.co.nz and welcome to New Zealand. Yes, good morning. Um, look, I thought we'd just kick off and I would just ask you, I guess, to give us a little sales mm. pitch. Mm -hmm. um, so New Zealand is, uh, the financial services sector mm. in New Zealand is dominated by four Australian owned banks who have about 90% of the banking mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. As a customer, why should I perhaps look at a cooperative instead? What can cooperative financial service providers do for me that, that other entities mm. can't? Well, uh, an excellent question. I guess that uh, one of the things that uh, you have to consider is that, of course, when you choose a financial institution, you need to be very well served. And in general, in the world, if you look at financial cooperatives, credit unions, Desjardins Group, and other uh, large uh, financial cooperative group, uh, the level of customer satisfaction is very high. The reason is very simple, is that at the end of the day, the members of the co-op, the financial co-op, are the one who are the most important stakeholders into the organization. Which means that at the end of the day, you are not just a customer, you are a member. And in that context, you have a role that you can play as a member, member customer, in the governance of the financial group, which means that you can become, if you want, a board member and be part of the decision process in the way the credit union, the financial group, will provide services. So this is one uh, major advantage. So it is not just somebody on the board who is taking decision for the group. You, as a member, can be that kind of person. Second, the ownership. At the end of the day, if you are a member of a cooperative organization, it means that, that, you know, in this organization, the ownership of the credit union, of the financial group, will be from New Zealand. This is also quite an advantage. This will allow the, the credit union or, or the financial group to reinvest in the communities. In re, you know, we'll be able to maybe align some products with the kind of clients and members that the credit union or the financial group will be having. So these are a few, I think, advantages that uh, people should consider. And this is why I think that the cooperative uh, business model is very powerful. Uh, we are facing very difficult times in the world. Uh, we are asking a lot of questions about job creation, about the fact that we have to face global cooperation. Sometimes we don't know them well. Well, with a co-op, the big advantage, whatever it is in you know, dairy products, consumer activities, financial products, energy, whatever it is, because we are active in many sectors of the economy, you know who are the people who will be making the decision. And most of the time, decisions will be taken with a very long-term perspective, having this kind of very nice notion of bringing people and business together. That's why I like very much the business model. Now, obviously we're in the age of, of the internet. Yes. We've got you know, things like social media, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer mm -hmm. -peer lending. What do all these mean for cooperatives? Are they a challenge for, for cooperatives? I think it is a challenge for any kind of organization. And I, I guess that even if you are a cooperative organization, you need to face change and you need to be good at innovation. And by the way, most of the cooperative organization um, started as an innovation. If I take Desjardins Group in Canada, Desjardins was founded 115 years ago in uh, a small town, Levy, just uh, on the other side of the river of Quebec City. And it didn't exist in terms of, you know, uh, a cooperative organization, that kind of credit union or case structure in North America. And our founder, Alphonse Desjardins, and his wife, by the way, decided that there was something missing to support people, small entrepreneurs in their communities. They were in contact with people in Europe. They were in contact with people around the world uh, because, you know, Alphonse was very nice uh, uh, being able to getting input from uh, a lot of people. And they decided to create uh, the first case. It was an innovation. 
And if I look at the history of Desjardins Group, and if I look at what we do now in Canada, a lot is about innovation. And I think that uh, when uh, we look at many uh, cooperative organizations, including some uh, in um, uh, New Zealand, uh, many of them are very innovative. And I think that that's the kind of DNA we need to encourage. It's not just about people, but it is also about being uh, innovative to better serve the people that we want to have within the cooperative. And obviously in the, the global situation um, is, is quite fraught at the moment. We've got the, I guess we've, we, we, we've got low interest rates. We're looking at zero interest rates in, um, in some, some countries and yes. negative interest rates yes. even. Um, I mean, how, how does a financial institution navigate its way through this world today? Uh, well, I think that we, uh, we are facing a time where uh, we need to really uh, uh, embrace change because we have a different context. This question of low interest rate combined with the increased pressure on regulations for financial institutions, the fact that with uh, the digital technology disruption we are having newcomers, as you mentioned, coming into the market, we fought sometimes regulation. Uh, we've got those major giants like Google and, you know, other uh, large organizations, global organizations. Um, very active into the payment system, it means that at the end of the day, we need to be very well connected to our members and clients. That we need to make sure that the product, the service that we, that we provide, as well as the relationship that we can develop, uh, are very much in line with the needs of the people. And in that context, you need to be very agile. You need to make sure that you, know, you can uh, have an experience for you with your mobile, but if you want to meet somebody, you can meet somebody in your organization. If you want to connect uh, via internet, you can do it. So this question of agility, this question of um, uh, being very efficient, but at the same time being very connected is something that uh, uh, should be part of the strategy. And I'm not saying that just for cooperative. Uh, I would say uh, that it is something that could apply more broadly into the financial services industry. In, in New Zealand, uh, but, but it creates opportunities, in fact, uh, because you can, uh, uh, if I think about Desjardins Group as an example, we created a network uh, within our, we have 40, um, 48,000 uh, employees, so we've got a lot of people. And we have 5,000 of our employees connected on the platform that they decided to put forward together, uh, which is a, a platform called Eccentric. So eccentric is essentially uh, a way for some of our employees who are, you know, passionate about innovation to connect to each other, to share ideas, and to start projects. And we've been able to do interesting things. Uh, for example, in instruments, we've got on uh, uh, mobile application uh, an application that could provide you and your daughter and your son, if you want, um, results about the way you drive which is an interesting story that you can have with you, your family, and your friends. But the advantage of that is that if you are a very good driver and you allow us to get that data, well, we can provide you with additional discount in the way we will be providing you in terms of the rate of your policy. So you can see that with something that is innovative, we can bring some interesting benefit, not just in terms of the rate, but also in the behavior that you have within the family about driving a car. So that's one example. So that's the kind of thing that uh, I think uh, institutions, financial institutions, as well as other uh, kind of organizations in other sectors, we need to take this kind of disruption that could be a major challenge and turn it into opportunity. So. Uh, it's an interesting, yeah. uh, in, interesting area. Um, look, in New Zealand, um, Fonterra is our, our probably most important um, very cooperative. Important. That, that so we well known in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's very well known in the world. Absolutely. Ob obviously, times are tough for Fonterra's farmers at the moment with the um, commodity cycle being at a very low ebb, dairy prices very, very low. One of the ongoing broader um, issues that Fonterra's had is, is bringing in outside capital. Um, they've been looking to, I guess, to move up the value chain into the more consumer product yeah. type area mm -hmm. and compete with big global companies like, like Nestle. But uh, with the, the farmers are uh, obviously keen to retain 
ownership of the yes. company. So how does a cooperative like that bring in outside capital whilst retaining that cooperative mm. structure? Well, that's a very important question. And of course, I cannot speak on behalf of Fonterra. I will leave uh, those very competent people to talk uh, about you know, some of the challenges and, and, and solutions. But I would say more broadly, uh, we, need, um, we need to be uh, not just innovative in the way we are providing products uh, to our members and customers, but the way we want to structure our uh, organization to be competitive on the marketplace. And the marketplace is not just local anymore. And if I take Desjardins Group again as an example, uh, we've decided to do uh, a cooperative agreement with two large um, cooperative financial institutions, one in the US and the other one in Europe, in order to put together a joint venture with minority shareholders and, and a you know, different feature in terms of capital uh, ownership in order to be able to compete in the payment system. Um, and, and we have been able also at Desjardins to issue capital share uh, to our members uh, in an amount close to $3 billion uh, in order to make sure that we've been uh, uh, able to uh, be fully compliant with the new Basel III uh, regulation. Uh, and at the end of the day, when I look at our financial results of last week, um, core tier one capital ratio is 16%, which is one of the best yeah, in strong. North America. Yeah. It's very, very strong. But without having some innovation in terms of capital instrument, in, in terms of the way we manage capital, it would be very difficult to compete. So what I'm saying is that I think that what is important is to keep this notion of the cooperative uh, concept and control at the top of the organization, making sure that from a governance point of view, we can maintain this notion of ownership within the cooperators. But it is, in my mind, totally acceptable and correct to have some uh, structure uh, within the group that would allow to get some capital, again, within the control of the cooperators at the top of the house in order to be able to compete, uh, be able to uh, do some expansion in other territories, in order to develop some plans, things that would be difficult to do without having a solid capital base. So I think that there will be uh, a lot of discussion about this kind of hybrid uh, cooperative uh, structure that I think uh, is important for global groups. Because at the end of the day, if we are not able to compete on the global scene, at the end of the day, it could uh, create an issue for the business, uh, the cooperative business model. By the way, uh, we will be having an international summit in Quebec City, the third one, um, next October, um, from the 10 to the 13. We expect to have a large participation, hopefully, from the people from New Zealand. And one of the topics will be about this question. How can we grow, how can we innovate, and how can we build capital to sustain into the ends of the cooperative movement uh, all those uh, businesses that we have to serve the members. Well, we'll look forward to, to hearing more about that. Thanks a lot. That's Thank Monique you. LaRue, who is the Chairwoman, President and CEO, CEO of Desjardins Group and also President of the International Cooperative Alliance. And I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.